Hi friends of Cocktails, today I'll show you how you can swap Saint Germain elderflower liqueur. For this, a homemade elderflower liqueur packed with flavor, for a fraction of the cost of the original. What's not to love? We'll also make the most famous of the elderflower spritz cocktails, the Hugo. And to end the episode, a little history on the Hugo as well, so if you make it to the bottom of the glass, let me know. Now, it's cocktail time. Še dobro da si lovil, he? Še še rabimo danes. Hvala za njega. So what is Saint Germain and what is all the fuss about? Saint Germain is a French elderflower liqueur created in 2007. To make it, fresh elderflowers are handpicked in full bloom every spring in the foothills of the French Alps. According to their website, up to 1000 carefully selected flowers fill every bottle. So it's no surprise, limited batches of Saint Germain are produced every year and every bottle is numbered. Luckily, it's not the monks who make it. It even has a QR code, which takes you to the website with the ingredients nutritional information and other information about the bottle. We can see that it's made with sugar syrup, natural added flower extract, neutral alcohol, water, brandy, sodium citrate and flavorings. We can also see it contains just over 34 grams of sugar per 100 milliliters. We'll keep all of that in mind for when we make our liqueur. One reason why Saint Germain added flower liqueur became so popular is its unique and delicate flavor profile. So let's taste it. Being one of the most popular liqueurs in the modern cocktail renaissance, it gained an infamous nickname, the bartender's ketchup. It was said bartenders would use it in any cocktail they wanted to taste better. The coloring apparently doesn't come from any artificial additives, but as a result of the pollen from each bud, blending with the liqueur's liquid components. There's plenty of sweet floral aromas of elderflower and citrus on the nose. It's rich with fresh elderflower on the palate, with initial sweetness quickly balanced with tangy citrus notes. It really has that something that the French call je ne sais quoi, that can make your cocktail bloom. It's popular for a reason, but it's also quite expensive, with the price hovering around the $40 mark. So let's try to make something that can go toe to toe with the flavor and smash it with the final price. First thing you will need is some fresh elder flowers. Let's learn about it as we go foraging. Elder flowers come from the elder tree that generally grows as a shrub or a small tree. From late May, you'll see masses of tiny white flowers hanging in sprays, which develop into purple elder berries later in the summer. The flowers and berries are the only edible parts of the plant. When raw, they are mildly toxic and have an unpleasant taste. Cooking destroys the toxic chemicals. For Saint Germain, farmers spend roughly 3 to 4 weeks in late May and early June gathering the blooms that will be used to produce the liqueur. The flowers are all picked in the mornings, when the yellow flower blossoms are only just beginning to open, meaning the aromas and flavors of the buds will be at their most prominent. Look for elder trees away from any traffic and pick completely white flowers. The ones that are starting to turn brown are past their peak. Once you have enough, it's important to use them as soon as possible for the freshest flavor. With that, we have all the ingredients for our liqueur. Alongside elderflower, flour, I'll be using 40% vodka, sugar, water, lemon peel, ascorbic and citric acids, and sodium citrate. For sodium citrate, I ask my go-to chemist among bartenders, Darcy O'Neill, who you'll know from the color changing cocktails episode. He explained that sodium citrate is typically used to adjust the pH and also enhance the flavors, with a slightly salty taste. Check out Darcy on the Art of Drink channel. Lemon peel will provide the essential oils for the flavor and the citric acid will bring the acidity. You could use lemon juice, which will be heating up the liqueur, so opt it for pure acid. Ascorbic acid, also known as vitamin C, will help with the color and slow the oxidation of yellow flour, which happens pretty quickly, making it lose the fresh flavor. And I've tested making this recipe with maceration, but the results weren't as good as I hoped. The yellow flour oxidizes pretty quickly and the flavors didn't develop as planned. So I turned to sous vide. This also gives you complete control over temperature and time. To start, we need to separate the buds from the stalks. I'll be using the small scissors, but you can pick these by hand as well. We are making one liter of our homemade yellow flower liqueur. So I add 45 grams of yellow flower buds into a large sous vide bag. A flavorless spirit, as opposed to using a brandy, gives us more control over the flavors we want to add, but feel free to experiment. Using the nutritional information from Saint Germain as a reference, I'm adding 342 grams of sugar for our DIY recipe as well. For dilution, 270 grams of water. Saint Germain is 20% ABV 
and that's what we're aiming for as well, for the wonderful tangy citrus freshness. That's a big part of the original liqueur. I'm first adding 2.2 grams of lemon peel, followed by 10 grams of citric acid. As mentioned, ascorbic acid will act as an antioxidant and it will also help with a beautiful color. 1.8 grams. And lastly, sodium citrate, a common acidity regulator in food and drinks. 5.5 grams. Then vacuum and double seal the bag. The better job you do at creating a vacuum, the less chance there is for oxidation of other flowers. Place it in the sous vide bed, set to 85 degrees Celsius or 185 degrees Fahrenheit for two and a half hours. Sous vide provides an even temperature throughout the process, resulting in consistent results every time. While you wait, you can sign up to the weekly Cocktail Times newsletter on kevincos.com, which brings you fresh cocktail ideas and insights into your mailbox every Saturday. The link will be in the description and the pinned comment below. While that's going, I also like to give the bag a little turn and shake to mix all the ingredients. Once the time is up, take the bag and transfer it to an ice bath to chill the contents completely. All we have to do now is filter out our homemade almond flower liqueur. First, I'll use a cloth filter, but I'll make sure to get all the liquid through by using a potato riser to gently squeeze what was left on the filter. You can filter this again through a rinsed coffee filter to get an even clearer result. After a few days, the flavors will develop even more and any small sediments will fall to the bottom of the bottle. I made the batch where I already slowly poured out the now clear DIY elderflower liqueur. Once bottled and labeled, it's ready to make your summer of cocktails even better. This ended up around 5 times cheaper per bottle, but let's see and taste how it compares to the original. The light gold color is there, but it's not quite as clear as the original. On the aroma, you'll get wonderfully fresh elderflower and lemon. The taste is packed with sweet elderflower, balanced with the sourness. It's super floral, with elderflower lingering on the aftertaste. Fresh summer liqueur that has, in my opinion, even more elderflower freshness than Saint Germain. But I'm biased. But I think this is more than ready for a test in the best known elderflower summer drink, the Hugo Spritz. Let's make it. This floral alternative to the bitter Italian spritz cocktails starts off the same way, with a chilled wine glass full of ice. Then comes the Italian classic, Prosecco. I'm using Fiol Extra Dry, 100 milliliters or a little over 3 ounces. You can use other sparkling wine if you want, but don't tell that to the Italians. Next, our homemade elderflower liqueur, 30 ml or 1 ounce. It will be enough to make it a little stronger, just sweet enough and with plenty of elderflower notes. Lastly, for a little dilution and lightness, 30 ml or 1 ounce of soda water. I usually don't measure effervescent ingredients with a jigger to keep as much of the bubbles as possible for the drink. Gently mix the ingredients and add the garnish. Spank a mint bouquet to release its essential oils and place it in the glass together with the lime wedge. Bellissimo! A straw makes it easier to enjoy the cocktail through the garnish, but you'll still get a wonderful mix of herbal, citrus and floral notes hitting your nose before each sip. Then you get a crisp and sparkling taste of Prosecco, complemented by the floral sweetness of the elderflower liqueur, but keeping it nice and balanced. It's a light and invigorating drink, perfect for the summer evening. I love experimenting with ingredients like this and bringing you ways to make cheaper alternatives for your home or professional bars. That wouldn't be possible without the support we get from you guys, through the Patreon and super thanks here on YouTube. Thank you for that. And a huge shout out to the newest member of the Cocktail Time Wall of Fame, Oleg. Thank you for the support and welcome to the Cocktail Time set. With that, you've made it to the bottom of the glass. Drop the clinking glasses emoji in the comments to let me know you watched until the end. Today, I have a little history on the Hugo. This refreshing spritz cocktail was invented in 2005 by bartender Roland Gruber in a small South Tyrol town in the Italian Dolomites, where it's now known as the original signature. In the original recipe, Gruber used lemon balm syrup, but soon switched it out for a homemade elderflower cordial instead. Nowadays, Saint Germain is often used around the world, but I think using a homemade version brings the Hugo a little closer to the authentic recipe. For another fun DIY ingredient, check out how to make a yogurt liqueur. I'll see you next week. Cheers!